Well, Transnet has completed the construction of the Mamatwane crossing loop in the Northern Cape. It says this project will remove over 40,000 trucks from our roads as well. Here's some great news. The project was actually completed 30 days ahead of schedule. Uh, so well done to Transnet. Let's uh, unpack what this means, though, uh, for the region and for uh, Transnet's uh, rail networks and how it's going to help the economy. I'm joined by Transnet's Bongi Nkosi uh, Mabaso. Bongi Nkosi, good morning to you. First of all, I think congratulations getting this project done 30 days ahead of schedule. It's quite a story. But help me understand what is this loop? Just try and paint a picture for me uh, because I have no idea actually how this all interconnects. Uh, thank you, Karat, and uh, good morning to you and uh, the viewers. So a passing loop, uh, if in layman's terms, uh, um, in railways, we use single lines to operate our trains. And as you would understand that you have traffic moving in both directions, the trains at some stage will need to traverse each other. A passing loop would be some sort of a detour where the one train going one direction will park while the other train will then move and then the train that's parked will then go back onto the main line. So basically, uh, particularly this project, uh, a passing loop was extended that enables then longer trains to be able to be uh, staged while one train moves. Uh, that uh, might seem to be a quite uh, something small, but in reality, uh, it uh, is a, a world of uh, it makes a world of difference in terms of creating capacity for us because it will enable us to park trains and enable other trains to move and therefore will create then seamless movement of trains in our system particularly on the manganese line yeah, I was going to say, because uh, I know the area of Sishin very, very well, running down to Saldana Bay, that very long uh, train line as well. I don't think I've ever seen the end of one of those trains. I always see the start. I never seem to see the end. It's just how big these trains are as well. Give me the idea of numbers then. What is this actually going to do for creating new capacity? Are we talking uh, a lot more trains? Are we talking a lot more uh, weight of manganese that's being carried? Help me understand uh, what's the numbers behind this. Yeah, absolutely, Karat. So first of all, just to your point, uh, the length of the train. We are on record, uh, South Africa, as having the longest production train in the world in a train that runs uh, manganese to Saldana. It's a full um, 375 wagon train, uh, which literally combines three trains of 125 wagons each into one long train. And that, that is something that our engineers uh, pride themselves off as a, as a big feat. So that, um, to, to your point, uh, will enable us to move 1.5 million tons of additional uh, volumes uh, through, uh, through the flow. Uh, but particularly, and the part that excites us the most, is that uh, it will enable us uh, to uh, activate a new service altogether. We are now going to be moving manganese for the first time ever uh, through the port of uh, East London, and that's going to be quite messy for the economy of the region in the, north, in the Eastern Cape. Uh, but will also be uh, quite big for the manganese industry. We are looking at a spin-off of about 4.4 billion rands into the fiscus that will be realized uh, through this process. Yeah, some big numbers, 4.5 billion rand into the fiscus, going to make a big difference. So now uh, also heading down to East London, we can expect uh, manganese as well. On the road perspective of this, as you tell me about how this is going to keep so many trucks off the road by doing this, Bongi and Corsi, I imagine uh, the cost of not having to run so many trucks for manganese is saving a lot of money, but also it's keeping a lot of trucks off the road as well. Give me, give me the background behind that thinking. Absolutely. So first of all, again, just to the point of the timelines, uh, we are excited that, and we are proving that as an organization we do focus on, on these critical uh, uh, enablement projects. Having delivered this 30 days ahead of time is really uh, quite a big feat for our engineers in the, in the mm -hmm. organization. But to your point, we will be removing some 45,000 trucks off the road uh, uh, in one year, in a space of 12 months. And those trucks would have gone through to uh, the port of Kabeja predominantly, and uh, the roads uh, from the Northern Cape to the port of Kabeja will be 45,000 trucks uh, less. But also, especially for the smaller players, uh, the cost of trucking uh, is quite significant, especially in the markets where the prices are, are losing uh, strength. Uh, as, we, as we speak now, manganese has fallen to below $2, uh, $3 rather per dry metric ton unit. What that means is we've now strengthened these producers to be able to withhold uh, the pressures of um, 
uh, of, of the eco I mean, of the prices that are falling in the markets, and therefore we will see quite a big um, uh, uh, ability on their part to sustain even in markets that are falling. So it is quite a significant one for the industry. Yeah, it certainly is. Just very briefly, as I say goodbye to you, Bongi and Corsi. So good news for road safety and maintaining our roads, not having all these trucks on the road. I've got a two-part question as I say goodbye to you. Uh, does this new crossover create any more jobs? I'm asking this because if we have 40,000 less trucks on the road transporting manganese, does that mean we have 40,000 less truck drivers employed? Not at all. Uh, remember, already as a country, we're struggling with um, uh, the demand uh, across uh, commodities for trucks. As it is now, coal sits with quite a significant uh, amount of demand of, of road uh, uh, hold uh, product. But most importantly, the 1.5 million tons that will now be produced will be coming from somewhere uh, in the Northern Cape, meaning, therefore, that uh, in terms of mining activities as well, there will be an upside and a ramp up in production mm -hmm. and productivity, meaning, therefore, that there would then be an upside in terms of jobs created as well. So uh, if we are looking at a safer mode of moving manganese, but equally not uh, destroying the jobs that would have yep. come with the 1.5 million tons. Uh, Bongi and Corsi, uh, thank you very much indeed for your time uh, in joining us uh, this morning. Bongi and Corsi Mabasso, uh, Transnet Frail Rail, uh, uh, Chief of Commercial for the organization. It's good news, of course, for uh, the manganese sector.